Have you ever been around someone and you don't know why, but you just ask yourself, what's the matter with them? What's the matter with them? There's a better question. Tonight's episode, we're gonna dive in. We're gonna jump in with both feet. Yep, we're talking about feet tonight. Feet that need peace if they're not bringing peace or walking in peace. Feet that need healing and wholeness if they are broken and torn and tired and feel like they've been stepped over. Feet, yes, feet. A lot of times we hold trauma, we hold pain, we hold memories, and our body entraps all of the aches, all of the pain and suffering within itself. And so our feet tonight are going to be delivered in the name of Jesus. I'm reading to you out of a book called, What's the Matter with Me? No, it's Who's the Matter with Me? It's an oldie but goodie. This is a gem. This is a treasure. Let's jump in. Both feet, please. So this book is called, Who's the Matter with Me? It's by Alice Stedman, and I love what she writes in the forward, in the dedication. She says, for the sick and tired who are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Isn't that genius? Who's the matter with me? Not what's the matter with me, it's who. Here we go. We're going to be dedicating our episode today on healing and deliverance of feet. If your feet are tired, listen up. I'm going to literally read from the pages and I want you to glean and listen to what God has to say about your feet. If anything applies, you take the word of God and you stand on it. Hint, hint. <laughs> You stand on it and you wait for the salvation of your Lord, of our God, the deliverance of almighty God. Ooh, I'm getting chills already. Here we go. Your feet represent the foundation of your life. And as such, they represent the hidden side of your personality. Just as the foundation of a building is hidden, but a most important part of the building. Thus, the feet represent your secret hopes and desires, your fears of limitations, the skeletons in your closet, and in general, the past and the closeted part of your thinking. D. Your feet are your understanding. It is the understanding of the past, both the mistakes and the successes that determines the present and the future. Whatever the background, do not be ashamed of it, but use it. It was the best to give you your experiences and your present knowledge. That is something to stand on, something to take off from. Earth is our home, but heaven is our destination. We rise out of tradition, but we are not bound to it. The purest white lilies rise out of murky bogs. We see the miseries of the world, but should not become a part of that misery. We must do what we can to help others out of the mud, but not be pulled into it by them. Say, I must wear no one's shoes, but my own. I will fill or wear the shoes that no other can fill but me. And if my station is high or low, I will accomplish it with love and understanding. I must love and understand myself if I want to help my fellow man. I am forgiven. I must forgive. Take a pencil and a paper and set down the things you have stood up for to now. Now, erase or cross out all hate, greed, jealousy, pride, 
What else is the beautiful pair of ill-fitting shoes that were not made for you? Purge your mind of those things, those secrets that have created physical agony. When you have no more emotional torment, your body will be free and whole and your feet a beautiful foundation of your life. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good tidings or how uncomfortable are the feet of those who bring or bear bad or unnecessary tidings. One night a woman heard that a friend had reported an incident of her carelessness which she had wanted to be kept hidden. It irked her because there was no need of its being repeated. Her foot became inflamed until she realized that she must forgive the friend, not bury the anger in the footings of her temple. When one is too sensitive and overly sympathetic with the underdog, the feet are too tender. Talk out your hurts and write them down and burn it or cast it, cast them on the great creator, the great creative one who says, if you confess your mistakes, I am quick to forgive. When you go into your closet, it is not to cry over your hurts or to see the rattling bones of old hurts of the past, but to commune with your divine nature. Before going to sleep each night, consciously say to yourself that the evil thoughts of the world cannot get through the invisible shield of God's love that surrounds you. The only constructive thoughts that teach a lesson will reach you and that you will learn a lesson from every experience you have. A girl was unable to sleep, wakes up in the middle of the night, writes a letter to her friend beginning, I know you want to kill me because I have not done what you asked me to do. And the friend dreamed at that same minute that she had killed her. An idle word? Yes. But idly tossed thorn seed come up better in the flower bed than the carefully sowed petunia seed. Whatever we think of other people in this world, we consciously or unconsciously expect them to think of us. If we are suspicious of them and hate them, they can feel no differently about us because that is the law of the universe. What we get is what we have given. What we give, we get. This was said 1900 years ago by the greatest and it seems so simple and so fair. When you analyze it, it could be no other way or this material world could not stay in balance. Read Romans 2, 1. For where in thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest does the same things. So true. When we are trying to understand other people, we must remember that the road back to perfection means a different thing to each person. Bless them and let them do it their own way. Imagine, if you will, many people in a large forest, some are where it is dark and filled with bogs and briars, and the way for them is slow. Some are in a clearing and seem to be making much progress, but a swamp looms ahead and temporarily they are slowed up. Some are out of the woods and have no problems, but they hear the cries of those floundering in the marshes and go back to help them. There are saints who take on the problems of the weak because they know that for that purpose they were born. Our soul knows that the highest and the lowest people are bound by the one Father within, and the highest must share with the lowest, because the lowest is the highest, and the highest is the lowest, the last first and the first last. Sometimes your feet insist 
on being immobilized for a while so you can catch up with yourself. There is good in everything. Elevate your feet and get your meditation and reading done. The feet can be used wrongly to sidestep obligations. And though they appear to outsiders to be going somewhere, your soul knows the real truth. The knots or calluses on your feet could be naughty places in your understanding of situations. Work on better understanding and exercise the feet also. The blood supply that goes through the feet goes to every part of the body. Since it is far from the heart pumping station, the circulation gets sluggish and deposits crystals. These are warts and corns and calluses. Massage them and let your circulation right itself. Do not belittle yourself because your dreams of perfection lift you into the clouds and you awake and find your feet still earthbound. Dreams do become true realities and the realities could no more be without the dream than the harvest can be without the planting. I love that. The things that grow above the earth are nourished by the earth in the earth. The feet are the part of the body most in contact with the earth and desire a secure footing. It is the desire of most lives to have roots as a home of their own, and they do not feel secure unless they have their own place. Since the feet are the meandering part that takes one far from its roots, then one may be uncomfortable without roots. Either make that secure home for yourself or realize that perhaps for you a home would be a handicap to your true purpose. But whatever you do, decide. Stand on it. Stop shifting from one stand to another. Stop always being unhappy because you are not someplace else. When Paul wrote, I have learned that in whatever state I am, there to be content. The feet are the parts of the body farthest from the heart, the love center. Everything of importance seems to reach every other part of the body before it finally gets to the feet. Sometimes people with unhappy feet feel they're only getting the leftovers, what no one else wanted or what was going to be thrown away, or that they have to wait for a long time for what they want. This upsets the feet. They burn, they blister, they get corns and calluses, or the bones refuse to support the body. You might say the feet are really sorry for themselves and feel they're always being stepped on. They feel martyred. To have happy feet, look at life this way for them. The feet are the foundation of the body. If you understand life and what it really is, you feel good all over. If your understanding is muddled, you feel bad all over. So change the emotional quirks that cause tender feet. When good things come to you through the arterial blood and through the nerves, don't hold them too long before understanding the situation or you create corns and calluses but send it back as love venice blood to all the rest of the world your body disease or pain is sometimes the working out into the open an undesirable subjective condition that's key right there when you recognize the purpose, use it for good and get that fresh start. A young horsewoman grew a spur in her left heel. A girl who rode at the same stable she considered very standoffish and belittled the other horses. She thought she was a real heel. I asked to see if the girl wasn't lonely and unloved. 
she befriended her and they buried their differences as the spur no longer needed to dig into her enemy melted away it left a more mature child that's healing do not employ your feet to have your body run away from situations or problems then have your feet hurt because they are to blame Who's they? take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee oh god stand still and see the glory of the lord the law of cause and effect understand yourself and accept yourself Jean Stafford said, when you accept yourself, it is like falling heir to the house you were born in and have lived in all one's life, but to which till now one did not own the title. Someone's home. Now look at your very own house, your body. It has some faults, but without those, some other good qualities could not have been true it may be difficult to live with a perfect person anyway now you are its master and can do with it as you will every moment you show your wisdom or lack of wisdom you gain experience by every decision be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind man is atomic power you have that power use it rightly or you disintegrate your world, your body. Every cell has in it many atoms. Desire splits the atom into energy directed in your perfected desire patterns. I love that, a mosaic pattern. Let no man say when he is tried, I am being tested by God, for God has nothing to do with evil nor does he try any man god is absolutely good and his will for us is good it is our deflection from his will that causes the evils or trials from which we suffer deep james 1 13 through 17. ouch if you are slapped on the left side the feminine receptive side Turn to him the right side, which is the positive, masculine God of love. Thus, the cycle is finished with love. Sylvia said, you may not be able to keep a bird from lighting in your hair, but you don't have to let it build a nest there. In other words, everything can come at you but you don't have to receive it. You can disseminate it. You can have the desire, right? To break into power all those things that try to beset you, that try to hinder you, that try to carry you down and weigh you down and make you lose your footing. Today, we're praying for feet. Did you hear those words of understanding? You have a standing under the wisdom. Wisdom comes and understanding sits. I love that. Um, today, we're just going to speak a blessing over feet, tired feet, worn feet, overlooked feet, feet that feel martyred, that feel stepped on, that feel lack of love. And so they may be dragging, they may be barely getting by, but we want to be rooted and grounded in the love of God, knowing that we're loved, knowing that we're home. We can step into the home of our bodies and feel at ease. Wow, I feel the power of Holy Spirit already. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for anyone watching, for anyone listening, Lord, to this message and says to themselves, that's me. Those are my feet. I have misunderstood things that I have stood for, thinking that they were right, thinking that they were bold, but they were really out of anger and rejection and envy and jealousy and injustice, Father God. I ask you, Lord, today for all those people that are 
connecting that are making themselves be seen by you father through this word on feet lord god that you would give them the desire to speak out and to say today i stand not on my own understanding but i stand on the understanding of god i stand on the word of god that says that all of his promises are yes and amen yes i can have healing yes i am whole and not broken yes i can stand up and mount on wings like eagles and i can run and i won't be tired i can walk Walk and I will have all things that I see as far as I can see that's my legacy of strength of power of boldness true boldness righteousness in the love of God I ask you Lord that people would realize that they are loved that they are home when they are with you Jesus and that their feet would be walking in peace that they would bring peace to to others around them, but first and foremost to themselves, that they would receive that peace, that they would walk with glad tidings, with good news for themselves, that the salvation of the Lord is theirs and that the joy of the Lord is their strength, the strength that they can stand on today. Father, I thank you that the word says that by leaps and bounds, we can do all things, Lord. You make us to have feet like deer, hinds feet, that we can go here and there and that we can be swift and fast, Lord, in all of our missions and all of our goals, Father. I thank you, Lord, that today there is no more sluggish weight that today there is a freedom to run to go and to not be to not be withheld father no good thing do you withhold from those who love you and who are in Christ father no good thing father I ask you Lord to heal feet that you would soften feet that you would make tender feet Lord, of those that have been serving you, of those that don't know you, of those who have been in pain and ache every day, Father. I've seen them, Lord. I've seen them, Lord. These people limp every day and they go to work and they hurt and they are in pain, severe pain, chronic pain, Father. I ask you, Lord, to bring a healing hand to them, Father, to the ankles, to the feet, to the toes, to the soles of their feet, Father, even up into their knees, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that so many ailments and so many pain, chronic pain, you are healing and making whole today, Father. Your word says that you sent out your word and that people were healed, that Jesus went around healing and doing good to all of those who needed it. Father, we thank you that you are here with us today. We thank you, Lord, that we would not ask ourselves, what's the matter with me? What is the matter with me? There's something wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you, child of God. There's nothing wrong with you, sister, brother, family member, friend. There's nothing wrong with you. But Perhaps, who is the matter with you? Who are you holding your emotions within your body, within your feet bound to? Who is the matter with you? Father, by the power of Holy Spirit, I ask you to enable and to infuse, Father God, a dunamis power, a power that breaks bondage, that lifts the yoke and the burden, Father. It breaks the strong man in the name of Jesus from those who are confessing right now who it is that they are holding anything against, any will, any judgment, any criticism, any jealousy, it doesn't matter. Just release it, say it, write it. The Holy Spirit knows. The Holy Spirit can manage. He can handle it. Do it by any mean and method that you want, 
but do it. Take action. An action of faith is something that Holy Spirit can use. We thank you, Lord, that those people who are confessing, they're writing, they're releasing, Father God, the people that they have held in any kind of contempt, in any kind of prison, Father, that that prison within themselves, in their feet, Father God, that they are just being made flesh right now, Lord, that they're being made softened and polished and refined, and there's a new flesh, there's a new healing bond over them. There's a balm of goodness and salvation and protection over them. And I thank you, Lord, that these feet, that they will awaken, that they will be tingly and awaken to new life, to a fresh start, to a home that they always have belonged to. Father, we ask that all your children come home today, Father, that they walk in, that they step in to their newness, to their new home. Cross that threshold, child of God. Come home. Be at ease. Be at ease. Let your feet rest and be at peace. All of this we thank you for, Father. I can't wait to hear the praises. And I praise you already, Lord, for all that you're doing, all that you have done, and everyone that will step up and say, I received that. And I received healing. I felt it. I'm manifesting it. I'm walking in newness today because of the word that was released. I thank you, God, for all of that. I thank you, Lord, for your son. I magnify you, Jesus. I bless your name. Holy are you. Blessed are you. Father, I thank you. Holy Spirit, do what you do. Holy Spirit, go about and do what you do. I thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray all of this. Amen and amen. Well, how about that? Who's the matter with you? I bet there's nothing and no one the matter with you right now after that word. I hope you'll stick with us. There are several areas of our body and even our mind and thoughts that this book really dives into. I love the way she wrote it. I love that it's kind of like picturesque and that you can imagine in the spirit how things really do hang on. And so I love God because anything that has been done, God can undo. And whatever has been undone, God can put together 100%. I hope you received tonight. And if you have any other suggestions or would like to hear on any other parts of your physical being, being prayed for and released from any burdens, any yokes, any kind of ailments and chronic pain, let me know say it and we will be on it so step into goodness tonight get some rest bye bye